Voice memo. Better, better, better voice memo. Hi, Rabbi. It's, it's live. All right. Good work, everybody. Good work. Good work, Jeff. Good work, Rabbi. Good work, Yosef. Good work. Okay. If you're, not, if you're not speaking, better to uh, put, put it on, um, on mute. If you have a question, please unmute yourself and ask any questions. Uh, I'd like, love to hear. All right. I'm going to share with you an incredible story tonight. One of my favorite stories, period. Um, this story is recorded by the previous Rebbe. And it is about the year 1787. Tafkuf Memzain. The Alter Rebbe uh, was then living in Liyajna. And one of his closest chassidim, his name was Rapinchas Rezis. Rapinchas Rezis, he records the story in detail, and we have all the details of the story from Rapinchas. Its story is especially, especially relevant right now because everyone needs a bracha for Rafur Shlema, and this is a story about Rafur Shlema. Uh, in this time of the year, especially, it's very appropriate to check your mezuzahs, check your tefillin for a blessing for, for all good things. And before Shoshana every year, the Rebbe would encourage everybody to take time to check them as this is checked. It's still in Baruch Hashanah community. We have very. Sorry about that. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, okay. We have very skilled safe from and it's a really good thing to check them as this is still for Baruch for all good. And right, here is the story. It's 1987, 1787 and Rapinchas Rezis was instructed by the Alt Rebbe to prepare the Torah scrolls before Simchas Torah. It was a Shana Rabbah. It was the last day before uh, the celebration of Shemin Yatzerah, Simchas Torah. And the Alter Rebbe asked Rav Pinchas to, to get all of the Sifrei Torah and to roll them and to prepare the Sifrei Torah for the dancing on Simchas Torah. Rav Pinchas took care of this whole mission. And when he finished preparing the Sifri Torah, he comes back to the Alter Rebbe to report that he was successful and got all the Torahs ready and everything's ready to go for Yontif. He comes into the Alter Rebbe and the Alter Rebbe, he tells the Alter Rebbe, he said he did the mission. And then he says, there are many people who are, who are sick. That year, there was snow throughout uh, Sukkot. In fact, the Alt Rebbe said that during the holiday of Sukkot, they had to actually take the snow off the Sukkah in order to, for it to be kosher to sit in the Sukkah. You can't sit in the Sukkah while the snow on top of it. So they, the the uh, fellow who helped the Alt Rebbe's household, his name was uh, his name was Kumze. They obviously had to call Kumze, Kumze to clear off the snow on top of the Sukkah. They weren't able, you know, it's not kosher to sit in the Sukkah without the snow on top of it. That's your girlfriend? I'm sorry? So they asked, so they, they removed the snow and they were able to eat in the sukkah. That, and, there, and there are a lot of people who were very sick. So he told the Alter Rebbe that people are very sick and need a bracha. I want to ask on behalf of all those who are sick for a full shleima. So that year, Hashanah Rabbah was on a Friday and he poses this request to the Alter Rebbe. The Alter Rebbe leans his hands on his, his head on his holy hands and he says, that it says about the Torah, Eish das lame. The Torah is called a fiery covenant. The fire of Torah will consume the fire of the fevers. Everyone has had fevers. The altar said, Eish oich la Eish. The fire of Torah will consume the fire of the fevers and everyone will have a full shlame. Then the altar said that everyone should come and participate in the joy of Simcha's Torah. Hold on one second. Everyone should come participate in this joyous Simchas Torah. Everyone should be there by Hakafis. The fire of the Simcha of the Torah will, will heal everyone from the fire of the fever. In that town, in Liyazna, there were a lot of people who were not Hasidim the Alter Rebbe. Of course, everyone had very great respect for him. They, they knew the Alter Rebbe personally, and they were asked a lot of questions and learning, but they weren't Hasidim. They weren't so devoted to him. Among those people in this town, 
were, were two great geniuses whose name was Rabbi Isaac Mechadesh. Isaac, the one who has insight. The reason they call him Isaac Mechadesh is because every other day he would go around there and say, I just invented something in Torah. I just have a new Chiddush in Torah. And the other guy's name was Raftoli Zoyer, Raftoli who was careful. They called him Raftoli who was careful because he always would say, I'm careful of how I eat. I'm careful how I dive in. So he got the name Raftoli, the one who was careful. So Rabbi Aftali Zahir and Isaac Machadish, they were very, they had a very deep respect for the Alta Rebbe, but they weren't Hasidim. And Rosie, I'm putting you to sleep? Yeah. Okay. Rabbi Isaac was from a town called Aptza, and Rabbi Aftali Zahir was from Kechna. So that year, Rabbi Avram the doctor had said that there, some, some of the people who were sick were really deathly ill. Among them, was the nephew of this of Isaac Machadish, this Isaac was not a his nephew was name was Ramesha, and he came together with his children and his son and son-in-law to stay at his uncle's house, Rabbi Isaac's house. And they're staying at his house, and Rabbi Avram the doctor examined this Ramesha, and he 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 felt that he is in his last hours. So people had heard that the al Rebbe said. So everyone should come to our conference and, and everyone who, the whole town would be there by the conference of the Alter Rebbe. But um, these people who were staying by Moshe's house, I'm sorry, Isaac's house, they were unable to move. They were just so sick they couldn't move. His son, Rabbi Isaac's nephew, Moshe, he was sick, he couldn't move at all. And his children, they were sick, but they, they, uh, they weren't deathly ill. But they also couldn't really get out. And they were really hoping that someone would come and, and, and invite them and bring them, help them get to our office. So Rabbi Pinchas Reizid, who had, asked, who had gotten this instruction from the Rebbe that everyone should come to our office, he got a couple of guys to come with him. And they went together to all different houses throughout, throughout um, Liyajna to bring everybody to our office. When they got to the house, of Reb Isaac, he they wanted in everyone's house when they repeated the message of the Alter Rebbe, everyone was very excited. Reb Pinchas writes how it was such a great nacha, such a great pleasure to see the simple amun everyone had, how the Alter Rebbe's words were so believed, so trusted, everyone felt so good. We're going to go to Akafus, we're going to get better. So they asked Reb Pinchas whenever he came to anyone's house. Please repeat to us, what, what did the Alter Rebbe say? They knew what the Alter Rebbe said, but they wanted to hear every letter what the Alter Rebbe said. Eishu, 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 repeat in everyone's house. The fire will consume the fire, the fire of the terror will consume the fire of the fever. But when he got to Rabbi Isaac's house, it was a little bit different because Rabbi Isaac wasn't a chassid. And Rabbi Ram the doctor had said that the slightest wind could send Rabbi Moshe into the next world. And he's in his last hours. And he's, it's really, Rabbi Isaac said that as soon as these Hasidim came in to bring Ramesh and his children to Hakafis, Rab Isaac, Rab Isaac had his reaction and Ramesh had his reaction. Ramesh's reaction is Baruch Hashem, we're raising a mirror. I need you on my lap. I can't think of I can't say a story that you on my lap. Please, you help me a lot, a lot, Rabbi Reza Miro. So they came into the house of, of Reb uh, Maisha there was different reactions, different people. The reaction of Ramesha and his sons were, thank God we're saved, we are saved, our father is saved, they're gonna take us to our coffees. Rab Isaac's reaction was, murderers, you're right, him. you're going against the Torah. In the Torah it says, when the temple was still standing in Yerushalayim, if someone was sick or someone was lame, they were not obligated to go to, to the Beis HaMikdash. That, and so, so how much more so to go to Akafis, which is only rabbinic, how much more so there's no, it, it's forbidden to take him to Akafis. He says it's literal murder. What you're doing is absolute murder. But the children of Amesha said, we believe with absolute faith that our father will get better. We, we, we have to go to Akafis. We need to go. So Reb Pinchas, he was witnessing all this. He had come to, to tell them and to help people get to Akafis. But he said he, he has to say, he, he confessed in his diary, his account of this, that I have to say that I was absolutely confused. I didn't, did not know what to do. On the one hand, Rabbi Isaac, words, very logical. 
And on the other hand, the words of Ramesha and his children, and they're, they're completely diametrically opposed, they're totally opposite. Their faith with sacrifice, with Mr. Nefesh, their trust in the Alter Rebbe, with such sincere faith, was, was incredible. So, so it was, wow, well, what's pure faith they had? On the other hand, logic <laughs> says that the one who is correct is, is Rabbi Isaac. That it's actual, <laughs> actual danger. So the godly souls, the, the, the logic of the neshama says that Rabbi Chaim and Rabbi Baruch, the children of Amesha, they're correct. Rabbi Chaim is right, Rabbi Baruch is right. We have to go to the covers. Alter says we're going to get better. But the logic of, of human, human logic says you're going to leave, you take this guy out of the house, you're a murderer. So the neshama's logic says this is a refuah and we have to go. And Rabbi Pinchas didn't know what to do. He has these two conflicting ideas in his brain. But from moment, to, from moment to moment, he became more and more excited seeing the simple faith of Rabbi Chaim and Rabbi Baruch, the children of Ramesha, the seeing their sincerity. And he said to himself how embarrassed he, he should be. He said to himself, Pinya, I think it was Rabbi Pinchas, he said, Pinya, you are someone who came to the Alter Rebbe because of his Torah. You knew before you came to the Alter Rebbe the geniusness, the incredible wisdom of the Goinim of the geniuses in Shklov and in Vilna. And you came to the Alter Rebbe because you saw the sagacity and the brilliance of the teachings of the Alter Rebbe in Hasidus. And you're studying by the Alter Rebbe for eight years. And yet you don't have, after eight years learning Hasidus, you still don't have the sincere faith that these two guys have in the words of the Alter Rebbe. These guys don't understand Hasidus. They don't understand the teaching of the Alter Rebbe. For them, it's as old as to accept upon themselves the yoke of Hashem and they, and they come to the Alter Rebbe. But by them, by these people, by these, by these simple people, their neshama shines more than the over, their neshama's energy overwhelms the body and they're, and they're able to think according to the logic of the neshama and have this sincere faith in the words of the Alter Rebbe. You should be embarrassed of yourself, Rabbi Pinchas said to himself. Anyways, Rabbi Avram then announced that Ramesha is mamish in his last hours. And the children of Ramesha say to Ramesha, don't worry, Tati. The Rebbe sent messengers to you. They have come to bring you to our covers. So Pinchas says he remembers walking into the bedroom of Ramesha, seeing Ramesha unable to move a limb. And he's, he sees his eyes are open and his face is happy. He wants to go to our covers. So they put warm clothing on him and he could not move at all. And they had to literally like, like carry him. Uh, and then they arrived in the shul. When they got to the shul, please, when they got to the shul, the shul, they, they were struck by the heat of the room. The room was packed. Some people in the room could not contain their coughing. They were coughing and coughing the whole time. They could not stop coughing. It, it was a It broke your heart to hear the sighs of some of the people who were sick there in the room of back office. The worst person, the one who had the worst illness, was a man named Rabbi Chaim Chatimsker. Abram, the doctor, said Rabbi Chaim Chatimsker. He was actually a very strong person. But, and Abram, the doctor, said the bigger you are, the harder you fall. He was such a strong person, and his illness was worse than everyone else's. And he said, though, Rabbi Abram said, hopefully he'll be strong enough to ward off the angel of death. But right now, he was, the, he was sicker than everybody else. So... The Alt Rebbe in general, every year, he would have two, he would celebrate Akafas twice. You have, you have a private Akafas for a few select Chassim who were invited to come to celebrate Akafas with him. And Rabbi Pinchas said, when he came to Akafas by the Alt Rebbe, he said, you could actually see light, the light of Hashem there. He said, for the first time in his life, when he came to Alt Rebbe's personal Akafas and the few Chassim that were there who were invited, he says, you could, he, for the first time in his life, he felt what it meant to like, like be like in the base of Amigdash. He, for the first time in his life, he felt this is what it's like to be in the base of Amigdash. And he said that every limb of your body has pleasure of different things. Your eyes have pleasure from things they see. That your ears have pleasure from things that you hear. Your heart has pleasure from things that you feel. Your mind has pleasure from things you understand. But then there's a pleasure that permeates every limb of your body. The pleasure you had seeing the Alter Rebbe by Akafis is something that touched the, the deepest part of the soul. 
and cause pleasure to every single part of the Jew completely. So the and they would see the Alter Rebbe's joy, and they could. They, this is how they felt. They felt the joy of the Alter Rebbe's face is a reflection of the joy of Hashem in Shemayim. The joy of Hashem is reflected in the face of the tzaddik. The Anpani here in the joyous face of the Alter Rebbe is the joy. It was expression of the joy of the Shechina of Simchas Torah. That's how that's how they felt seeing the, the, these Hakafas Alter Rebbe. When the Alter Rebbe finished Hakafas, the Alter Rebbe would then go into the sukkah. You go into a sukkah to make kiddush. And then after Kiddush, he would go and do a public Akafas for everybody. So that year, it was different. That year, Dr. Wolf went, went in the Sukkah. When he went in the Sukkah, he, uh, there were a few Chassim there. There was a Michal Arin from Vitebsk, of Shavsi Meir, and Reb, and, Reb, and Reb Yaakov Smulyan. And Reb Michal Arin was a Kohen. Reb Shavsi Meir was a Levi. Reb Yaakov from Smulyan was Yisrael. So there were a few Chassim there. Dr. was about to make Kiddush. And after Kiddush, he's going to go to the shul to for a kafis. So he, when he, before he makes Kiddush, the Alt Rebbe says that he needs to have a best, he needs to have a Jewish court. But in his court, he needs to have a koyen, a levi, and strong. He says, Reb Shabsi Meir, you're a levi, you're a michalan, you're a koyen. Reb Yaakov Smuyan, you're a Yisrael. I want you to be a best, and I want you to have in mind all the thoughts that I have when I make Kiddush. When you answer Ami to my bracha, I want you to have in mind all the things that I'm thinking about when I make Kiddush. So they all listen to Altarebbe's Kiddush with great concentration. They answer Amen. Then the Altarebbe says that I'm making you, this group, this Koyen Levi Yisrael, this Bezin, this, this, this small group of three, I am making you to be my, shli, my, my shluchim, my emissaries, to bring health to everybody. I, and then the Altarebbe took some of the, the wine left in his cup and he mixed the wine he poured some drop of his wine into other bottles that were there. And he said that they should bring the wine to anyone who is sick. They will have Mirza Shemra for Shlema. The Atab also said that any lady who never had children should also drink from this wine. This would be a bracha for a four. And the Atab also said that any woman who unfortunately has miscarriages and never had, and can't carry the term, can't have healthy children, she, she can't give birth to a child, should also partake of this wine. So the three members of this court, this special mission of Rafua, go to the go to the, the main show of the Alt Rebbe, and they make the announcement. Rabbi Yaakov, on behalf of the Bezin, makes the announcement, and he adds two things, two conditions. He says that till now I told you the words of the Alt Rebbe, but I want to add something. We have a tradition that we receive of our time receive the elders of the generation before we received from the generation before that there are two conditions to receive a blessing one condition is one condition is is that when you receive a blessing you have to have absolute faith in the one giving you the blessing, the one giving you the blessing. faith without any without any other thoughts nor if the blessing be fulfilled and number two you have to dedicate yourself completely to do the will of the one who's giving you the blessing to do do what he has to observe the Torah and good um, and to act in the way of good character and, and observe the Torah and in the way that the one who's giving the blessing instructs you to do. Those are the two conditions to receive a blessing. To be devoted to the one who's giving you the blessing and to have absolute faith without any other thoughts, the blessing be fulfilled. And then they gave out the wine to everyone. The next day, everyone spoke about the incredible miracle. For the elders, the Ram the doctor said, this was mamish tchias amesim. Mamish, the, the, those who were some people, mamish experienced resurrection of the dead through this miracle. Rabbi Isaac himself, whose nephew Ramesha was healed completely by attending the Altarev Zakafis, he became a chassid of the He said, what, what, what got me, what made me become his, his chassid was the incredible faith, the simple faith of his nephews. And he said, if, I, if someone would tell me what had actually happened, he said, I would never believe it. So he became a great chassid al Rebbe by him seeing this incredible miracle and seeing the simple faith of his nephew and their, and their children. Anyways, bottom line is, it's a new week, Baruch Hashem, and it's a time of bracha of the Jewish people because the king is in the field, Hashem is there, open, ready to listen to any request we have of Hashem. So let's bring the brachas down.
by observing what the Rebbe instructs us to do in the month of Elul, to bring the brachas down, checking our mezuzahs and film, and adding in all of the five acronyms in the month of Elul. Elul stands for Torah, Enel Yod Yisam Tilulach. Elul stands for prayer. Enel Nil Day Day Bizi. Elul is about Shuvah. Estavav Vestavav. Elul is about Avish Yisrael. Ishayim Tansav Yenim. And Elul is about Geula. Shir Lashem Yim Olamer. But the underlying, most important acronym in the month of Elul, the Rebbe says, is the idea of redemption, freedom. The Rebbe is empowered to make a new step forward in a whole different way where before. And hearing this, this, this story really is one of my favorite stories because you see in the story the incredible faith of a Jew with sacrifice and how th- th- we see things one way, but how a tzaddik is able to um, to to see a whole different way and, and a Jew has to have absolute faith in the words of a tzaddik. I want to dedicate our our story tonight to the neshama of Rabbi Sifranowitz, who has passed away and his shiv is actually concluding um, tomorrow. Rabbi Sifranowitz was a person of not just the great genius in Torah knowledge, but he was a person who had an aura of faith in Hashem around him, faith in tzaddikim around him. You, you just speaking to him, you were in an environment, just being in his presence. You felt like you walked into a little shtet, a little, little town in Europe, and, 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 and just seeing him, it was a soaker, an expert scribe, who helped thousands of people, mezuzahs and tefillin and sefreitera, and it's not just the actual giving them mezuzahs and tefillin, when you came to him, he taught, he didn't just, he wasn't satisfied with you you're getting your tefillin checked, your mezuzah checked. He, when you came to him, he had to sit there for a couple of minutes. He, he wanted to tell you something, get a message for you. And every single time, he always took the time, he stopped what he was doing, and he would talk and listen and share and instruct and and, and with empathy, with, with with sincerity. And he reached the neshamas of literally thousands and thousands of people who were all over the world. So his neshama should have an aliyah, he should be a good to better. For Amen. 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 All good and all of us in the car of Mamish, we should see him again. The car of the Mashiach to Kano. Amen. Amen. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Shavuot. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you.